second or two. I uh, <laughs> looking at my cell phone. My cell phone says one. I've got a digital clock over there that says a couple seconds after, but I know that that's a couple seconds fast. Anyway, uh, welcome to a beautiful, beautiful, sunny Sunday afternoon here in Michigan. We've already got a bunch of people in the room. Thank you for joining me. Uh, if I'm a little slow today, I'm tired because I went and saw my favorite band, Blue October, last night at the uh, Fillmore in Detroit with 2,900 of my closest friends. <laughs> They are my favorite band. If you're unfamiliar with their work, look them up. They're all over YouTube. They're huge in Texas, uh, but they're one of those bands that kind of falls between the cracks. Of you, it's, it's hard to categorize them perfectly for radio. And so, you know, but I've seen them four times now. They're uh, absolutely amazing. I love those guys. They put on a great show, but I got in about 1230 last night. And what made it worse was yesterday I decided to put up the offer for anybody who wants to buy a copy of American Murder Houses from me. Um, I've got a bunch of these. <laughs> and so I said, if you want one, just email me at steve at and I'll put it on the screen right now or I'll put it in the chat at least. And if you want one, email me. Just put book in the title uh, line, you know, the regarding line. And what will happen is I will then send you an invoice via Square. And you can pay the $15 for the book, and I will sign it and mail it to you. But you got to be in the U.S. And I apologize. Doug, I know, pointed out and said, hey, Steve, I'm in Canada. I will put together a price list for Canada and a couple other places I've gotten a lot of requests from. It's just, I, I got to tell you that it's it's going to be cost prohibitive. I think you can buy this book in Canada from Amazon for, you know, uh, let's see here, $16 Canadian, okay? But if you want to sign one for me, and you're willing to pay the extra shipping, I'll do that. I'll do that. But I just, uh, I so I made the offer yesterday, and I put a video up specifically on it. And I said, if you want one, email me. And my phone started blowing up. And so I started trying to get on top of it and get ahead of it by sending out the invoices as fast as they were coming in. But I had to go to the show. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm sitting at the show during the warm-up band, and I looked down at my phone because I haven't opened it up in a while. And it said I had like 595 unopened emails. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, <laughs> this, this is not going to be an easy weekend for me. So I just uh, I just decided that unfortunately, uh, and G Keyman says, what, no driving today? No, I haven't got time. Uh, in fact, I almost skipped the live, but I thought, you know, I'm going to do it again. I'm going to do it again. So so I, I, I got up this morning. I've been hammering out those invoices. I almost got caught up, but not quite. So if you have sent me an email asking for a, a book and I have not invoiced you yet, you will be invoiced. You will be. I just, just give me some time. I'll get to them all by today. I'm pretty certain, pretty certain. But if I, if I, if I can't, then uh, tomorrow. But I, I, as soon as I, as soon as I, uh, run out of books, I'll take the video down. But while that video is up, assume I've got books. So, Mr. S oh, I'm sorry, Mrs. Teresa, 1999. Hi, Steve. I'd love to meet you if you come back to Geneva, New York. I'm still thinking about that. I, I, <laughs> I have to talk to somebody about getting back on the radio. Donald Westerdale, Michigan man in Lincoln Park. Lincoln Park. It's also the name of a cool band, but they spelled it with a K because there's apparently somebody else already called Lincoln Park. Um, Johnny Knoxville says, tip your bartender. Speaking of which, I'm building a bar set so I can make Tom Collins at home. Yeah, you, you got to have the right furniture to drink in alone, right? <laughs> Although, <sighs> the scooter guy, I had tickets to see Blue October and had to give them away. Oh, my gosh. I've seen them four times. I've seen them four times. I've seen them at a tiny little club called the Machine Shop in Flint, which is about the size of an outhouse. Um, and... Uh, they might not appreciate the description. It's a very small place, very small place. And then I've seen them at the Royal Music Theater a couple of times, and I saw them at uh, the Fillmore last night, and it is just absolutely amazing. So um, the Chomps says, hey, Steve, I just noticed in your last video you have a lawyer dog available on request, and you have a baseball bat labeled lawyer dog. Is that really the lawyer dog or a coincidence? Uh, well, the lawyer dogs become a running joke on this uh, channel. In fact, I now have the license plate on my Cobra that says lawyer dog. <laughs> it came to me and I surprised nobody had it yet. <laughs> so, oh, Admiral Adams. Hey, Steve, what 
requests a kind of salutation you find appropriate when people send you stories such as Dear Steve, Mr. Leto, etc. You can call me anything. I introduce myself as Steve Leto, so you can call me Steve. Uh, you can call me Ray. No, <laughs> not going to go there. But I will tell you that occasionally people address me as professor <laughs> because I was a professor. And technically speaking, once you've been a professor, you can always claim to be a professor. It's a it's a title. But uh, you can address me as Steve. You can address me as Mr. Leto. Whatever you feel is appropriate. Um, and if you meet me, likewise, you can just call me Steve. So there you go. Uh, Mr. Phil, 1969, greetings from Ocean County, New Jersey. What's up, Steve? And everyone. Rocks, 1989. Hey, Steve, watching from Colorado, and I appreciate your experience in the wonderful world of all things legal and not legal and or questionable. Do you go to any car auctions like Meekum or Barrett Jackson? I do not. I do not. I've, I watch them on TV. I'm fascinated by them, but I've never gone and, and you know, I've never been in the market to buy a high end car. Uh, I'd be too tempted to buy one if I went. So one of these days I will. My good friend Mark Lieberman and another friend of mine named Adam Lukachel, they routinely go to those. In fact, I've seen them on camera. I'm like, hey, there's Mark. Hey, there's Adam. I know those guys. In fact, uh, Mark brought a Tucker to Meekum not so long ago, and the two of them drove it up onto the stage. <laughs> so that's pretty cool. <sighs> oh, boy. Do you hold an FCC license or just the station, Michael Lawless? I used to have the operator's license, but you don't need them anymore to be just a disc jockey. Tommy Ann says, the Lord gave the word. Great was the company of those that published it. He that is of God heareth God's words. Ye therefore hear them not because ye are not of God. And uh, I appreciate you checking in on a Sunday because I assume that you probably have to be in church today, right? Or maybe you came home already. So there you go. Doug Jones is road trip in the new car soon. Yes, in fact, I, I am, am revamping my uh, mobile camera setup. And I'm hoping that I can get them uh set up and get some uh, road trip in there pretty soon uh earthbound misfits is hey this is not the forum for religious speak actually i have no problem with anybody speaking out as long as you don't uh, get too out of hand so dougie do what's the best time of year to drive through michigan going to do around the country drive this year uh summer or fall uh, don't even don't even think winter, but summer is, you know, there's beaches, there's lakes, there's all kinds of beautiful stuff you can do in the summertime. But fall is if you're gonna like not get out of your car, <laughs> do the fall colors. There are some of those that are uh, beautiful, but you got to time that just right. I've gone up north too soon and too late, and it's weird. You go up a week early and the leaves are starting to turn, and you get there a week late and the leaves are gone and it's three feet of snow. Shreng Zui Zhang. Hey, Steve, what's the earphone you're using? Um, I forgot the brand name of these. I should know them. They're rather expensive, though. These are like $300 earpieces. I kid you not. And I went to, um, oh, mental blank now, but the place online that sells all the high-end uh, stereo gear, a musician's friend, musician's friend, and I bought them there. And they're extremely good. They're extremely good. Uh, they're, I, in fact, I would say they are on par with using a pair of AKG K240s, which I have over here, K240s, but I'm not using them today because those are the ones that sit like this. On, on the radio, I'd use those. But uh, for this, where I want to be less obvious, I wear this. In fact, if I want to be even less obvious, I could put this behind my back, and you probably wouldn't even notice them at first. Um, Stephen Glover, what states have lemon laws for RVs? I don't know that many that do. Um, I know California does, but every state's different. And, and almost all of them uh, talk about lemon laws for the driving portion, not the living portion. So you're not going to get them to buy back your RV if the um, toilet doesn't flush properly, that kind of thing, generally speaking. Daniel Kester, good friend of mine. Daniel, how are you, my friend? How are they doing with Mr. Leno's turbine car? Um, they're doing pretty well. I spoke to my brother yesterday. And if you don't know this, go to YouTube, type, type in Turban Haggerty, Haggerty. And you'll find a video that I'm in, Jay Leno's in, my brother's in. And they talk about the Turban Car program, but they also talk about the recent uh, travails <laughs> that Jay Leno's had with his because his engine blew up. Uh, and, and he talks about it in the video. And, and so he's uh, having some people help him from a company here in Michigan that my brother works at. So my brother's uh, the lead on that project. And so um, uh, I get updates periodically. I talked to him yesterday. 
And um, they're getting closer, but they still got a lot of way, a lot of ways to go. And I and I hate to give time frames because he won't give them to me. He just keeps saying, "Look, here's what we did today, but here's what we got to do that's left." So, scooter guy, woodchuck update. I have not seen the woodchuck since the night I chased him out of my garage. I, I think he's three houses over, trying to convince his friends that he got chased out by a crazy guy at six o'clock in the morning. Wayne Jensen, I love my AKG K240s. Yeah, those are great headphones. I used them in my first job in radio back in 1982, I think it was, Bad Axe, Michigan. And I've gone through so many pairs since then. I even use the metal detecting. The only problem I have is the cord is not um, the squiggly cord. So you got to be very careful about getting the cord tangled and caught up and stuff. But it's very, very good. Somebody did ask me last week if I could bring my metal detector out here and show it to you. And I didn't actually get down to that and i apologize and but i realized that what i could tell you this is almost as useful and probably more so for some people if you go onto my channel there's a search box and you can search for uh, videos go onto my channel and type in whites w-h-i-t-e apostrophe s whites whites and whites is the brand of metal detector that i use it's a whites v3i and you go uh, in there and search for that, and you'll up, up will pop a video called Target Comparisons on a White's V3i. It's not exactly the hottest video on my channel, but for people who like metal detectors, and I have it sitting on a table in front of me, configured in a way that I can take targets and go like this past the coil, and you can see the screen as to what it reads on the screen. And so it'll let you know a lot about how metal detectors work and so on, and also how the White's V3i specifically uh, responds. DePaul 31 Sennheiser headphones for broadcast. Um, I'm not sure if I've ever used Sennheiser. I know Sennheiser makes great microphones. Uh, I personally like the Electric Voice RE20, but I know that for a period of time, a lot of FM stations use Sennheisers. Uh, and it's just a cool name, Sennheiser, you know. <laughs> Tom William checking in from Knoxville, Tennessee. Beautiful town, Knoxville. I've been through there a few times. Um, is the Canadian robot lady in? I don't believe she is. And I, I, I spoke to her yesterday and I think she won't be able to get on one of these live streams for another week or so, just dealing with, uh, some stuff she's got happening around the house. So what can you do? Um, I wonder if I ever saw a turban in the wild. Did any go to Dayton, Ohio? Dan Boyd, you can find out. It's actually very easy to figure out, um, to some extent, go to turbancar.com. It's a website, and on there, it has a list of all the people who had turbine cars during the two-year program back in the 1960s and what cities they were in. And if there's somebody in a city that is near you or in your town, there's a good chance that you could have seen it. But they also took them on tour, so it's, it's quite often possibly that uh, you would have seen them on a tour. Uh, Johnny Knoxville says, nothing is more attractive to the bikini babes on the beach than a guy with a metal detector and sandals with socks on. Yes, and also uh, like a big floppy hat. <laughs> I don't do beach detecting. For, well, that's one of the reasons why I don't. Gilbert says, uh, ever take your cars out to Waterford Hills Racetrack? No, I have not. I have not. Although I'm not really into the idea of racing my vehicle. I'm worried that I lose control and, and, and take out one side on a wall or something. Uh, Ed C. Bond says, hey, Steve, fellow attorney here. Love your videos. You help me keep up with the areas I don't practice in. Thanks. That's actually one of the reasons I like doing these videos because I, I practice in such a narrow niche. Niche? Niche. <laughs> it's narrow, whatever it is. That I like reading about stuff. I've learned more about constitutional law by doing these videos than I think I learned in law school. But uh, yeah, so so thank you. I'm curious what state you're in and what you practice. I'd, I'd, I'd love to know that. But um, you know, there's so many attorneys out there. That, uh, you know, there's a lot of us. DePaul says that they make headphones as well. I assume you're referring to Sennheiser. And I'm, 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 I'm sure they do. I'm sure I've seen them. But um, I just don't, uh, I don't think I've ever used them. Gene Montgomery, Audio-Technica AT4040s for me. Is it a microphone or, or headphones? Dan Boyd, Telefunken. Telefunken is one of the greatest brand names of all time. It's a German audio company that makes you know i think they make radios and, and microphones and all kinds of stuff but just telefunken <laughs> i'm sure in german it means something completely different to what we might think but it's cool it's telefunken 
David Barry says, hey, Steve, start an AI website for help for us that can't afford lawyers. Well, I mean, you can you can do the same thing that AI would do for you, but just without the hallucinations. All you got to do is go on to uh, uh, the Google and Google your questions. And I mean, the amount of stuff that you can figure out on Google blows my mind. So I've had someone actually contact me and go, Steve, you got this wrong. In North Carolina, the law on this is such and such. And they don't give me a citation for it. So I go into Google and I type in North Carolina law on such and such. I find the citation. I read it. And then I contact the person back and I go, well, here's the law. I think, I think I'm right. They go, oh, I guess you are. It's like, um, you could have done that too, though. Okay. Johnny Knoxville says narrow casting is the opposite of broadcasting. That right there is something, dude, that's profound. You have no idea how profound that is. Because a lot of people will talk about YouTube and say YouTube is is broadcasting but anybody can get on the platform but the genius of youtube is that they know how to target this stuff based on what you viewed and so it winds up being that you can start watching very very specific channels and so if they were to take a show like mine lato's law and put it on television do you know how few people would watch it and and even fewer people would find it <laughs> somehow and yet here, people find it, and they can keep finding it, and it's there. But there's all these other channels. That you, you can name anything, any weird hobby that's out there, and there's a channel, there's, a, there's a, a, a slew of channels devoted to it. So, Jeanette Waverly, thank you very much for checking in and, and supporting the channel. I appreciate that. In case you don't know, I do not monetize these live streams at the get-go, so there won't be any ads or anything like that. There shouldn't be until it goes up as an archived show. Then I flip the switch. Staying retired, are you a coffee drinker? No, I don't drink coffee. I drink Diet Coke by the gallon. <laughs> People often say, hey, hey, Steve, that stuff's not good for you. I don't think coffee's good for you either. I mean, we all have our vices. I used to work with a guy who was built like Jabba the Hutt. And he'd walk up to me, and I'm drinking Diet Coke. He goes, uh, dude, that stuff's not good for you. And I wanted to look at the guy and go, dude, whatever you're doing is not good for you. Like, <laughs> so. <laughs> Garbage plates is YouTube suggestions are not what they were in the 2000s. It's broken. Uh, I'm not sure about that as far as my personal experience goes. But one thing I can tell you is you can often reset them. So I can tell you, and I've told this story before, and I apologize. So I'll try to shorten it for you. But about 15 years ago, I broke a tooth. I, 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 I literally, I was eating and I felt it. It was like you're sitting in a house and your foundation broke in half. You'd know it. So I jumped on the internet and started Googling dentists. Like I needed to get to a dentist now. And I didn't have a local dentist there. And so I then went to the dentist, got it fixed. For the next three weeks, I was getting ads on Facebook and Google and YouTube and everywhere. Do you need a dentist? Do you need a dentist? And I'm, and I'm so sick of it. And I apologize. This might be considered a sexist thing to admit. But I went on to Google and started doing searches for bikinis and lingerie. And very, very quickly, the suggestions went from grotesque photographs of people's mouths with broken teeth to hot young ladies trying on lingerie. And <laughs> now, like I said, I know some people are say, Steve, that's inappropriate. It's just what I was watching. It's not, I wasn't making anybody else watch it. So, um, Ann Beer says, I love my Diet Coke. And LG says, Diet Coke is my embalming fluid. Yeah, just getting started early. <laughs> Susan Laughlin says, Pop. That's the big debate soda or pop. It's a regional thing. It used to be called soda pop. And uh, some parts of the country, it's soda. Some parts of the country, it's pop. I know in California, you can actually say, I want a Coke and they go, what flavor? And you can go seven up. Because they call, a lot of them call any soda Coke. And they'll, and they'll ask you as a follow-up, what do you mean by that? So uh, EDC Bond says, to follow up, I'm a felony prosecutor in Georgia. Do you have any watches other than Navitimer, which he asks about because I'm not wearing it. But it's actually right here. I occasionally take it off and I'm sitting at my desk because I, I, I hit my desk with it. And it bothers me. So I, I'll take it off. And I was just sitting here doing a ton of work. And so... Um, I, I now I've now I've moved it and I've upset myself. A felony prosecutor, though, that's that's the kind of job. <laughs> don't get me wrong. 
I've known guys who are prosecutors and went around and started doing defense work and made really, really good money doing that. But prosecutors work for the state, so you're on a salary, basically. So you, you know how much money you're going to make this year, right? Uh, but on the other hand, you are probably seeing all kinds of heinous stuff that you, you wish you didn't have to see, you know? And, and, and to be dealing with it on a day-in and day-out basis is kind of like if you signed up to become an emergency room physician. You're going to see some stuff. You're going to see some stuff. So, you know, my hat's off to you for doing the felony prosecution. Someone's got to do it. And uh, I, I, I wouldn't want it to be me. I wouldn't want it to be me. So, Springs is a guy smoking, asked me if the bug spray I was using was going to harm him. <laughs> Oh, that's the greatest thing ever. Um, Norm Anderson says, in California, it's oh, it jumped on me. California soda. Southern states call it sodas. Coke. Uh, yeah, and in, in Michigan, and I think in parts of Ohio and other parts of the Midwest, very, very close to Michigan, it is, in fact, pop. So they will they will laugh at you if you call it soda. They won't, they won't come to fisticuffs. It's not like you're insulting anybody. But by the way, and I, and I never know when I should bring out notes that I have here. But I have to tell you that last week's live stream, I always check the statistics. I'm curious to know like how many people watched it. Did people have fun? And it'll often say how many subscribers I gained during the live stream. And usually I pick up five or 10 subscribers during the live stream. Last week's live stream, I lost 10. <laughs> 10 of my subscribers were watching my live stream last week and said, okay, I'm done with this guy. And I went and looked to see what we talked about. There's nothing that out of line. I mean, we didn't have anything controversial like, you know, uh, Marianne versus Ginger. You know, I mean, it was just the typical stuff. Nothing, nothing controversial at all. And somehow <laughs> I lost 10 subscribers. So <laughs> Doug Sparks is in Finley, Ohio. They call it pop and maybe a soft drink. Of course, of course. Mark Miller says, you rock, Steve. Thank you. I appreciate that. Jeff, Mr. Fix, it's in Westland, Michigan. Uh, I've been there many times. Um, Dan Boyd says, my mom grew up in Pittsburgh. They don't color the cream soda red. Um, Johnny Knoxville says, it's kind of like losing $10 if you have half a million. Well, yeah, yeah. If, if, if you're drawing the correlation between the fact I almost have 500,000 subscribers, I think as of this moment right now, I will tell you, I'll give you the exact count as of right now, 499,457, so I need 543 more subscribers to roll over the odometer to 500,000. Sadly, you do not get a new plaque till you hit a million. And that might be a couple more years, so there you go. Uh, Raymond Gilbo says, what is your opinion on the criminalization of homelessness? Is it right for states or counties to charge people for financial stress? Uh, I have mixed feelings about that because, um, if you're homeless, where are you going to go? And there are some places where they don't have any place to go. Now, if there's a homeless population somewhere and there are like resources for them that they're choosing not to take part of, I have a little bit less sympathy for them. But on the other hand, uh, let's face it, there are people who, for whatever reason, go, well, I'm homeless, I'm going to move someplace warm. And next thing you know, there's an, an overflow of people who are homeless living someplace, and it does cause a strain on the infrastructure. But, I mean, throwing them in jail, um, yeah, you put a roof over their head, but it, it it does seem like that might be a waste of taxpayer money, but I'm not sure. It's, it's, it's a real problem in some places and other places, not that big of a problem. But I, I've, I've seen, I mean, I've literally seen with my own eyes that, um, you know, California, for instance, when I went out there to, to see Jay Leno and go for the ride in the Duesenberg, uh, the little tent cities that have popped up underneath all of the overpasses uh, near where he is. So um, Larry Rosen, thanks for all you do, Steve. It's great. I lived in Sterling Heights, which is in Michigan, from 1985 to 89. And I remember some of the places you mentioned. Thanks again. Yeah, it's funny because that's the time frame within which I was finishing up my undergraduate and going to law school. Uh, and so you probably got out of here just as I got back from law school right around there. Um, Drew Cannon wrote, 500,000 is awesome. I work with attorneys daily and I can say 98% don't have the ability to do what you are doing here. 
Really is an awesome job. Well, I appreciate that very much. Janice Ellery says, yes, here in Fort Lauderdale. And uh, Florida is also one of those things where a lot of people go, well, if I'm going to be bumming around and I don't have anything else going on, may as well go someplace warm. And so it's Florida and California, the two hot spots there. Mark Miller says three hots and a cot, Steve. And by the way, a cot might be more than you can expect. I've, I've heard sometimes it's, it's literally like, you know, you're laying on like a metal slab or something. Um, Gene Montgomery says just sleep in an RV that is not covered by the dealer. Oh, wait, an RV is not a home in Arizona. And by the way, I know what you're getting at, and I'm not arguing with you, but I want to point out something that the court in Arizona simply said that under the bankruptcy statute, an RV is not a home. That's all they said. So they said under other statutes, it might be, we don't know, but just for bankruptcy purposes, it's not. You want to fix that? Legislature can fix it. I got angry emails, people yelling at me going, Steve, I live in my RV. It's my home. What, what right do you have to tell me it's not my home? I, I, I didn't tell you it's not your home. <laughs> Unless you're going through bankruptcy. And in that case, it was the Supreme Court of Arizona, not me. And um, so sometimes there's nuance in the law that people miss. And one of the things that really bugs me is that people don't understand how different statutes contain their own definitions, meaning that what is considered a motor vehicle under the driver's license statute is very different than what's a motor vehicle under the Lemon Law statute. And they do that for whatever reason. They've always done that. And so I've had people tell me, they go, well, Steve, I found this definition in this statute. Why doesn't it apply over here? Well, does this statute over here have its own definition? Well, then that one applies. You always take the definition from the statute you're looking at if it has one. And I've had people arguing, no, 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 no. I, I found a definition I like. I have the right to use that. N no, you don't. <laughs> Courts don't work that way. You can argue all you want. And what's really funny is I've had people actually say to me, they go, Steve, you're wrong. To which I always say, well, uh, it's not whether I think it's right or wrong. It's what a judge is going to say. And I've seen a lot of these arguments made in courts. And guess what? I, I'm I can predict for you which way the court's going to go on this. They're going to, they're going to agree with my side of this. But I don't have a dog in the fight, so I don't care. <laughs> Peter Lehman, what's your favorite security question? You mean like if you've lost your password and you're trying to figure out if it's you? <laughs> uh... You know, it's kind of weird because a lot of the security questions are like, 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 what was your favorite pet? Well, I had two dogs, Milo and Wolfie, and I can't decide among them. <laughs> so I've never cared for security questions. And quite often I've made up stuff. So it'll say things like, you know, what's your, uh, you know, your, your great grandmother's maiden name? And I'll put down McGillicuddy. And then I tell myself, okay, try to remember you use McGillicuddy because it's <laughs> not correct, but that's what I used. <laughs> So, Bonnie's sister, can you give a shout out to our servicemen and women? Of course, I, I have the utmost respect for anybody who serves our country in any capacity, whether it's the armed forces that you think of traditionally, the Army, Air Force, Marines, and so on, or Navy, or Coast Guard. And I've got a Coast Guard plaque on, on my shelf back there, and people do ask me about that. And I tell them, I'm not, I'm not in the Coast Guard, but a guy who was sent that in and said, Hey, Steve, I'm in the Coast Guard. Would you put this up? And I said, absolutely. absolutely. The, the schools, the military, uh, and, and those are two of the things that I, that I, I like the most. Like people send me shirts and if it's got a school on it or it's armed forces, I will, I'll wear it and keep it in rotation longer than others. Sting cool says the security questions are designed to collect data from you. I always assumed that. So, you know, what's your mother's maiden name? McGillicuddy. <laughs> Mark Miller, does it bother you that TV movies so distort the law? It seems like folks watch too much media and don't understand the laws for which they've governed. Well, the biggest problem I have is that a lot of people in Hollywood will apparently think nothing of making a movie about the law and not bother having a lawyer watch it once, like read the script once just to make sure they got stuff right. And I've seen stuff in, in movies that's idiotic. And I'm not going to talk about it right now because that's how I lose subscribers. 
<laughs> I've gone on a couple of rants about legal movies I didn't like, and people get offended. I'll tell you my favorite legal movie of all time is still Anatomy of a Murder. It's a black and white older film, but it's a fabulous, fabulous movie. Six Oaks Farm. How is the Viper? Put any miles on it? Uh, the only mileage you put on my Viper so far recently was when I fired it up and drove it out of the garage to make sure that the woodchuck wasn't in the wheel well. <laughs> and he wasn't. So I put about half a mile on it at that point in time. I actually pulled it out of the road, turned around, and brought it back. But the Viper's got 10,500 miles on it. I rolled it over 10,000 a while back, but um, hadn't driven it much since then. Got really busy. Uh, and so... Uh, I will get it out this summer. I'll probably get it out this week if the weather stays nice. It's beautiful. It's 74 degrees right now. It's sunny. Uh, but the Cobra, I've got to get out because I want to take out uh, and shoot some video of it. Uh, and so we'll we'll do that. And so hang on. I, I, I'm completely screwed up on the chat here because I always forget which way it goes. And up, oh, going the wrong direction here. Hang on. <laughs> I was glad to see your view on the Kansas bill. As a Kansas resident, I was interested in your thoughts of the bill. That video went up this morning. Was it this morning? 11 o'clock? What day is today? Wait, where am I? Oh, Earth. Hang on. <laughs> Sorry. But, um, yeah, Kansas legislature just passed a law. It does need the governor's signature. I think the governor will sign it. But I could be wrong on that. And uh, what will happen is... Um, uh, if it gets signed into law, it shortens the time frames on civil asset forfeiture to where they've got to move faster. They can't just wait you out. And then they've got to do things like have a higher standard of proof. And then if the state loses, they got to pay your attorney fees. And that's going to, you're going to see a ton of these small cases go away because they pull somebody over who's got a thousand dollars on them and just take it. They go, yeah, you got to go hire an attorney. We'll see you in court. Ha ha. And an attorney comes along and goes, oh, wait, let me get this straight. I sue them to get $1,000 back. And if I get it back, I get my attorney fees paid. I'll file it right now. You know, and so attorneys will be jumping all over this. So unfortunately, taxpayers will be picking that up. But hopefully, again, the prosecutors and the people in power are going to talk to the police and go, guys, you've got to really dial it back now because we don't be wasting taxpayer money defending loser lawsuits over this. Because right now, the pendulum is swinging in the correct direction. And a lot of people now know uh, about what civil asset forfeiture is, and they want to see it go away. So I'm glad to see that Kansas did it. It's going to be literally state by state. I know a few other states have done it also. But some states have done it with all kinds of really weird loopholes and stuff. Michigan announced it was going to do it and then kind of passed this watered-down law that didn't really change anything. So Gene Montgomery says childhood nickname, first school, favorite pet, Pet city, and then city where parents met, and so on. Oh, pet and city where parents met. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Jay Abner, do you keep a battery tender on the Viper? Yes, yes. Uh, in fact, the Viper, as you might know, has its battery inside the driver's side back wheel well. So to get jumper cables on it, you pop the hood, and there's actually posts out there that are marked, and you can actually hook a battery tender to that. So I've actually got a permanent set of connections there that runs down and is a connector. And so when I'm not using a battery tender, I just leave it there. But when I need to plug it in, I can walk over and simply plug it in really quickly and it, it keeps the battery charged. So I've been doing that. Larry Roseman, thanks to you and the IJ, the word is getting out about civil asset forfeiture. And that's, that's those guys... And, you know, it's kind of funny. I grew up and the ACLU was always in the news. The ACLU is out there. They're fighting for some small group that was trying to hold a protest. And the cops came in and the ACLU stepped in and preserved their rights. And I'm not really sure. I'm not going to get too heavily into it. But it seems to me that along the way, the ACLU kind of wandered off and either lost direction or it's not on point anymore. And I remember the first time I heard about the Institute for Justice. I'm like, who are these people? And I read their mission statement. It's like, we take on the government on constitutional issues. Federal government, state government, local government, we don't care if it's a constitutional issue. We will step in and take care of it. We don't care if you've got the money because you don't need the money. We will foot the bills on this. And they will come in and fight some of these cases and routinely, routinely take them to Supreme Courts and they don't care. They don't care. And so a lot of parties and attorneys 
we're kind of worried about cases if it's going to go to the Supreme Court is going to cost so much money that they couldn't do it. And I did a story years ago about the guy who was moose hunting from a hovercraft in a federal park, <laughs> national park. Feds came after him. And apparently, if you're moose hunting, you weren't allowed to do it like from an aircraft. But he argued, and I think, I think that was part of it, was, was that he's, I'm in a hovercraft. It's not an aircraft. But anyways, I forgot what the distinction was. And he went all the way to the U.S. Supreme Court. The Supreme Court says, no, technically the guy's right. They did not specify that you can't do this from a hovercraft. And so when that guy was done, he had to hold fundraisers and stuff. A friend of mine in Alaska went and actually attended one of the fundraisers and uh, helped raise money for this guy's legal bills for going to the Supreme Court. Cost a fortune. Um, Daniel Kester says, 1967, Bug has his battery under the right side back seat. Yeah, and, and you know, small cars, you got to figure out where to put it. The Viper, they put it in the back, I think, primarily so that it will uh, put more weight towards the back. I knew a lot of hot rodders back in the day who would put the battery in the trunk because it's like, hey, you're going to put all this lead in your car. It may as well be behind <laughs> the back end of the car. Jay Mankey checks in. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Steve, how many before she flips 500,000? I think I told you a few minutes ago about 400 some odd, 500 maybe. So, um, Tin 601, can you explain why it costs so much to go to SCOTUS? Well, number one, you got to try your case in the lower court and you lose. So you appeal that and you lose. And then, and you know, and, and at each stage you go up, you're, you're spending a fortune on appellate fees. It costs a lot of money to hire attorneys to file appellate briefs. And I know it doesn't sound like it ought to cost millions of dollars, but I know it costs hundreds of thousands of dollars. And so it's unfortunate, but it's true. Jim Beam, hello from Katy, Texas, was born and lived in Albion, Michigan. Can't wait to receive your book, Steve. Thanks. Yeah, and Albion's a cool little town. It's got a, got a school there. I've driven through it a few times. It's a neat old, um, you know, Norman Rockwell kind of town, Albion, Michigan. Writes Crispy says, our state needs help from the Institute for Justice. 25-foot halo around cops or corrupt cops. And no more citizen review boards. I dropped the word corrupt because I'm pretty sure the law probably just says 25-foot halo around cops. <laughs> but you can editorialize and call them corrupt cops if you want to. Um, citizen review, review boards, I've always thought, were a good thing. Uh, because who indeed shall guard the guards, someone once asked. And you can't have the police policing themselves. Uh, but there, there is this fight going on right now. And um, hang on a second. See, I've got a mute switch on this on this mic. Um, and there are people out there who'd like to be able to film the police as they do their jobs. I have no problem with that. And so obviously, if I'm at the side of the road and I've been pulled over by a police officer and the police officer is talking to me and someone's filming it from the sidewalk or over there, or over there, I got no problem with that. And cops shouldn't either. But on the other hand, you can imagine. And again, I'm not going to get into how far this is or anything like that. But you can imagine that somebody could come up and insert themselves in the situation and go, I'm just filming and start sticking the cameras in people's faces and stuff. So there's got to be some separation. Is it 8 feet, 12 feet, 25 feet? And so I don't know if a court will ever rule on that specifically with an actual footage length. But, but it's, it's, it's a tough call. So... A hot mess of Steve live viewers up to 660 need to get a few more sub. What's your percentage on subs appearing on your list? I don't know. It's actually fairly low. I'm pretty sure. In fact, most of my videos, three quarters of the people who watch them aren't subscribers, you know? Um, and so subscribers are cool, but, but you know, the, the views are what counts, but if you're so inclined, I, you, by the way, a phrase you've never heard me say is subscribe and hit the like button. I just, it bugs me. I worked in radio for so long. I always hated hearing disc jockeys doing things and saying things that sound like they're begging. Hey, Johnny Knoxville's kicking in 666 for uh, to fund my next ministry, Gary Newman, front 242 tickets. Yeah, it was actually um, Frontline Assembly, but I think there's a connection there. But yeah, that was the show I went to about a month ago, the, the, the night before the Woodchuck incident. <laughs> 
<laughs> where the guy next to me collapsed. And I'm convinced he was drunk. I'm, I'm convinced the man was just drunk off his butt. And instead of saying, uh, I'm drunk, he goes, hey, it's my hip. The guy keeps falling down. And like we're we're trying to keep him from smashing his head on the ground. And eventually he got escorted out. And I, I don't remember seeing any ambulances. I'm pretty sure they're like, uh, dude, uh, maybe stop drinking for a little while. That 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 could be at the root of your problem here. Earthbound Misfits says, I hate channels that beg for likes and subs before the video. Yeah, and and by the way, it's another reason. Um, I get complaints because I got ads on my channel. People are like, hey, Steve, you got ads in your channel. You'll notice that my videos go up with no mid-rolls. And I've been watching a video that I really, really like. And all of a sudden, an ad pops up in the middle of the video. So if I'm on my Peloton, for instance, I'm like, okay, I'll just keep watching. It's like a five-minute long ad in the middle of a video. And <laughs> it's like, so I, as, as an old radio guy, again, I don't like commercials either because they're what slowed down the show. Dooley says, duly noted. And he's one of those guys who's got a name that just lends itself to that. I knew a guy whose last name was Kirk, K-I-R-K, and his license plate was Kirk Out. <laughs> Randall Kirksey is checking in. I appreciate too, that too, my friend. Oh, boy. Johnny Knoxville used to spin Frontline Assembly's Mind Phaser track all the time as an industrial DJ in the 90s. You know, Frontline Assembly, for those who don't know, uh, they were the warm-up band for the warm-up band for ministry at the show that I went to see. And um, they are industrial and they're loud. They are they 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 replaced at the top of the list of loud things I've heard in my life. So I've heard a Ted Nugent concert. Uh, I've seen uh, the Thunderboats on Detroit River. I've, I've been to a NASCAR race. And the loudest thing I've ever experienced is the Frontline Assembly show. They were louder than ministry. They were louder than Gary Newman. Uh, and, and, but it's, it's also music that lends itself to being loud. And I mean, it's, it's, I don't sit and listen to it in my spare time, but I was enjoying it at the time. And it just made a lot of sense. So I, I, I liked frontline assembly. Randall J. Kirksey is checking in. I think I may have already said that once. Thank you very much. Doug Jones says that guy has tragically hip. Ah. <laughs> Oh boy. And what's funny is the Americans have no idea why that's so funny. Um, Canada, uh, of course, is its own nation with its own laws. Um, that's a joke from the onion. And um, they have their own radio stations and they have Canadian content rules. They play more Canadian music than they do uh, here in America uh, on radio. And, and not necessarily because of that, but you know, uh, there's, there's bands in Canada that are big that you've never heard of in America. And one of them that you have not heard much of is Tragically Hip. And I remember hearing that this band from Canada, Tragically Hip, they're huge, they're huge. And checking out their music and going, eh, it doesn't do it for me. But, you know, I mean, everybody has their own thing. It just doesn't do it for me. It's probably similar to the way Oingo Boingo was huge in California. Oingo Boingo could sell out the Hollywood Bowl for as many nights as they wanted to. They just, whenever they felt like it, they would do it. And they stopped touring. They eventually broke up. And, of course, uh, the guy behind them has started doing theme songs for TV shows and movies and, uh, you know, uh, The Simpsons, for instance. So, uh, Immortan Bob says, are you telling me Devin Townsend actually gets radio play in Canada? I'm not familiar with Devin Townsend. I apologize. Nonya Bidna as I love all you do. Michigan love, brother. Hey, to you, my friend, as well. Um, Randall J. Kirky says it's not Kirksey, it's Kirky. Did I mispronounce it or did somebody else? I apologize. <laughs> Carlene Stinson says Canada had some great bands. My favorite will always be Triumph. I saw Triumph warm up for Van Halen back in the uh in the either 1980 or 81, I could be wrong on the date, Kobo Hall, very, very early in Van Halen's career, and Triumph formed up for them. A fabulous show, both act. It was amazing, amazing. Dan Boyd points out that Oingo Boingo changed their name to Boingo in 1994. That is true, although, quite frankly, people called him Boingo before that. Um, and it was on, I believe, one album. They did that, and then they put out a live album, and they and they retired. Um, but... Um, 
Eh, we still call them Oingo Boingo. What can I tell you? Um, Kel Marie says, hey, Steve, Michigan here. Well, thank you for checking in. Uh, Mr. Hang on. Mr. R. Brookhart, how would you feel if asked to testify in Congress on civil ask forfeiture? Um, I'd, I'd be happy to do it, but I'm not the right witness. You want to bring in victims. You want victims to come in and talk about how their money is taken from Stephen Lara needs to come in. He's the guy who was the Marine who had a seventy seventy five thousand dollars in cash taken from him at the side of the road. And the entire time he's like, yes, sir, no, sir, to the police officer. And he got his money back after the Institute for Justice got involved. And he's one of the nicest guys I've ever met. He's the guy you couldn't have picked a better person to represent what the wrong is in civil asset forfeiture. So Johnny Knoxville points out there's a huge 80s synth new wave show in Los Angeles on the 4th of July with the Romantics. The Romantics are also going to be part of a show called Totally Tubular, I believe, in uh, Ro- uh, in Detroit area, Rochester Hills, Meadowbrook. I'm going to see that, along with Thomas Dolby and uh, Modern English and like one half of the Thompson Twins. I'm not, I'm not sure. <laughs> I know it wasn't two guys but <laughs> that were related in twin speak. But anyway, uh, Pinky says, I have a tragically hip CD that a friend gave me back in the 90s. Love shadowy men on a shadowy planet and bare naked ladies. I've seen bare naked ladies play three times or four times. Uh, now when they tour, I don't believe both of the lead singers are there. I think Steve, Steve and Ed were the two guys in front. Uh, Ed was the tall guy. Steve was a shorter guy with glasses. Um, and Steve's no longer with them, but they still put on a great show, do all their great songs. And um, they are one of those bands that understands that we are here to entertain and we'll do whatever it takes. And I saw them play at a casino in Mount Pleasant a couple of years ago. And they came out and did just this killer set. And at the very end, and I forgot what songs they were, but I talked about this. Um, Ed, the lead singer, goes, guys, you know, I'm often up here with a guitar singing. And the drummer gets kind of bummed out because he's always back there drumming and nobody notices him. So he and I are not going to change positions. So he went back to the drum set. And the drummer came out and sang with a guitar. And they did a, a, a they, they did a, a, a medley. And it was Led Zeppelin, Bon Jovi, and I forgot what the third song was. And it was amazing. It turns out that Ed can drum and the other guy can sing. <laughs> it's like, who comes up with this stuff? And, uh, uh, and, and their catalog is huge, too. And, I mean, they got overplayed with some of it, you know, like Brian Wilson or this, you know, this little apartment. But it's great music. It's great music. And I've got, I've got a bunch of their CDs. I love their stuff. Lieutenant Frank Drebin. <laughs> I just watched that the other day. I'll get banned if I admit to being a 66-year-old longtime Grateful Dead fan. Uh, you know something? Uh, I, the Grateful Dead, uh, if nothing else, proved that you could build up a following without radio airplay. I, I mean, seriously. Uh, a Touch of Grey was, I believe, the only song they had that hit the top 40. Or if it, if it wasn't the only, it was one of only one or two. Uh, but but they had this massive cult following, and the cult was so big as practically a religion. <laughs> so I, I admire those guys for what they did. Um, I actually knew guys. I met I met people who followed them for a while. Like, yeah, we went to like eight dead shows in a row, you know. And um, I've never liked any band that much to say I, I want to sell everything I own and go follow them. But you know, hey, what are you gonna do? Um, Night Train FPV says uh, Soaring Eagle puts on great shows. They do. They do. In fact, at a, at a thing a while back, I, uh, I I met the woman who books their shows and had a long conversation with her. And they're basically trying really, really hard to bring in relevant shows aimed at younger folk. Now, I realize I'm not younger folk, okay? <laughs> but they don't want the casinos to be a bunch of 95-year-old people just playing slots and, 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 and you know, drinking and smoking and playing the slots. They, 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 want, they want to try to get in the next few generations behind them. Johnny Knoxville says the Superbird book is $186 on eBay right now, but from the UK. It's probably $86 shipping. <laughs> John Ware says, I saw Joe Bonamassa in Orlando last month. Joe Bonamassa is a guitar virtuoso. And um, I, I actually saw a band playing at a, at, a, at a park in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. 
I heard music and I walked outside, walked around the corner. There's a park there and there's a band shell, and a band, just a cover band. And it was some guy who was like a high school teacher from like Marquette and his buddies. They have this band in the summertime. And he played a bunch of really cool songs. And he goes, yeah, it's two or three songs by Joe Bonamassa. And I'm like, whoa, <laughs> was, this is really cool stuff. I'd never heard it before. So Apple checks in and says, thumbs up, I believe. Or somebody else did to their thing, I guess. Um, Jay Abate says younger gamblers add to sports betting. Uh, sports betting right now is getting so huge. And also, um, uh, Texas Hold'em poker, uh, which I admit I find fascinating. I've only played it once or twice. Um, a friend of mine had a bachelor party and we were playing Texas Hold'em. And people go, Steve, did you win or lose? I was actually doing really, really well. But then my friend, who was the guy who was getting married, he busted out. And so I actually said, does anybody object if I just give my pot to him and I can get up and so... I'm not sure what it became of my money, but at one point I was doing really well. <laughs> but the funny thing is a bunch of these guys played cards with each other. So they knew what to expect. And I know that, that the whole key is to not let on whether you've got a good hand or not. So, uh, Margaret Chase's truck and never got on the charts. I don't know. That's the other song I was thinking of possibly, um, touch of gray obviously did. Um, but truck and possibly, but also, Keep in mind, I'm talking, a, uh, you know, uh, uh, Billboard Top 40. So whether these things ever got onto, like, you know, album rock, charts or something, I don't know. Ember Mist says, well, not to be a downer, but what do you think is some good steps to take legal-wise for when that time comes when someone passes? Uh, the, the real trick is to try to plan ahead. And unfortunately, nobody ever wants to think about the fact that they're going to die someday. And so I know some people who say, you know, I don't care. I'll be dead. Uh, but on the other hand, if you want, like, for instance, your house or something to go to somebody, um, you might want to look into that because a little known fact, for instance, in Michigan, I'll give you an example. If you die in Michigan, okay, and you have no children and no spouse, who gets your stuff? And believe it or not, it can get split between your parents and your siblings, so I've mentioned before, I've got parents. Well, unfortunately, my mother passed away recently, but a couple of years ago. But, 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 you know, so my father's around and I've got five siblings. So if a person were to be in a situation like that, not married, no kids, what happens then? Do you want your stuff being divvied up between your father and your five siblings? And some people might go, gee, I don't know. I, I like this guy to get some stuff, but maybe not that guy. And so you can sit down with an attorney and do a will. It's relatively cheap. Poke around, find somebody who does those. And now don't get me wrong. If you want to set up like some kind of irrevocable trust and do all kinds of weird tax sheltering things, that might cost you more money. But of course, if you've got that kind of money, it'd be worth it. But I know a lot of people go, I don't have that much stuff, you know? And so I can tell you that, and I've mentioned a joke before, but it's true. Uh, I took a class on wills and estates and trusts and the guy professor on the first day of school goes, um, I'm going to tell you something right now. Everything goes to the first person who gets there with a the U-Haul. <laughs> he goes, now we'll talk about what's supposed to happen. And every story I've ever heard said that someone passed away. The family went over there to, to go look at their stuff and half the stuff was gone. And they all suspected they knew who took it, but they couldn't prove it. And I've heard stories about people, for instance, showing up someplace and finding somebody going through the jewelry box going, oh, I'm just inventorying it to make sure it's all still here. Well, who would have taken it if not you, you know? So Boyd the Goofball, is Steve Leto married, divorced, or never married? You asking me or are you asking the room in general? <laughs> I actually don't talk a whole lot about my personal life in that respect. I'll tell you all about my personal likes and dislikes, movies I like. I prefer Marianne over Ginger, uh, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, but I don't like to get into family stuff that much. Um, so unfortunately, I'm going to skip that for now. But someone else just asked, FDSS, and I will turn your first name into an initial also. I'm glad the lives are back. It's the highlight of my Sunday. Well, it's a highlight of mine, too. <laughs> Because I actually have work to do. <laughs> I got to stop my work. 
<laughs> and do this. And I should probably mention this one more time is I did a video, put it up yesterday. I said, I got a stack of these books. They were remaindered by my publisher. And if you want one, the 12 bucks from me, just email me directly, steve at latoslaw.com, and I will sign it and send it to you. But you have to be in the US. I cannot at this time send them out of the country. It costs too much money. And quite frankly, it's not worth it, I don't think. But I might do some for Canada. And I might do some other countries where I get a lot of requests. I just got to go to the post office to find out what they charge for that. But it might be cost prohibitive. But I simply need to tell you this so that you can go into it with full disclosure. So. So, um, smack your mama says, I like Marianne too. Most guys did. <laughs> I remember watching Gilligan's Island going, why did they make ginger the hot one? Like, huh? But uh, you know, it, it's, it's a comedy. Norm Anderson says, Hey, Mrs. Howell, do not. <laughs> there's a reason Thurston liked her. Okay. There's, there's so, so don't, don't downplay that. STP world. Did you ever get threatened in a court case or by a client? I've never had a client get angry with me. I've had opponents get angry with me. Um, someday I'll tell the story. I don't want to do it right now, but someday I'll tell the story that, that I was, I, I had a trial once and, uh, it was, it was, it, it got ugly. It got ugly at one point in time during my closing argument, I walked over to the opponent's bench and his attorney is here and the, and, and the defendant is right here and i stuck my hand right in this guy's face and i turned to the jury and i go this man is a liar and i left my hand about this close to his nose as wondering if he's going to reach up and whack it or bite me but he didn't but but i know that he didn't like me after that <laughs> the jury found in our favor agreeing with me that that man was in fact a liar so Hugo's Travel says, I got my invoice looking forward to the book. And again, if you've sent me an email and have not gotten back the uh, invoice, give me time. I did not get to them all because they were piling in last night. I was at the show. So I came home. I actually came home and I was in the house about 1230 last night until about 2 a.m. Hammering out the invoices on Square because I felt so bad. I got so far behind. And I was worried that people were going to forget about it. Go, Why am I getting this invoice from Square? What's up with that? Oh, boy. Um, Daniel Kester says, Natalie Schaefer was Mrs. Howell. Yeah. Um, Bob Jones, did you like the Batman TV series? I mean, the old original Kapow with Burt Ward and, and them. Ah, I watched it as a little kid, a really little kid. But um, I think that it kind of, uh, you outgrow it at about nine years old. So, STP World, are you surprised Florida got rid of squatters' rights? No, not at all. More states should. And I've said before that states need to pass a law that says that if somebody shows up and goes, this is my home, I own this home, and there's people in there shouldn't be in there. If they walk out and go, well, I've got a lease from somebody, unless that lease is signed by this person, the court should hold an immediate hearing and ask the tenant to post a monstrous bond so that if, if the tenant is wrong, they're going to pay. And let them know, by the way, uh, if you get caught squatting and you, and you present a fake lease, someone's going to jail. I mean, they need to be very, very serious and come down hard on that because I've heard so many stories. Now, quite often, it's, it's, it's empty homes that people move into, but still, it's one of those things. Bart Verhulpen says, too bad I'm in Belgium, but I will buy the book locally. Well, I assume you mean because you can't buy the book from me because I'm assuming Belgium's a beautiful place. I've never been there. I've been to France twice but never been to Belgium. So someday I will. Um, Josh says my dog is a squatter. <laughs> Legally or physically or both. Douglas Oligny, did you ever go up against Tony Taug from Muskegon County DAs? No, I don't do much criminal work. So I, I haven't dealt with uh, district attorneys outside of Wayne County, Oakland County, Washtenaw County, and I'm not sure I've done criminal work outside those three counties. Do you need our mailing addresses in the email? No. I it just All I need is, but I do need your first and last name. Send me an email, book in the subject line, and then I will send you the invoice, and the invoice will say, fill in your address below. And that's the easiest way for me to do it because I can have them all in one place. 
So the scooter guy says that some squatters are the victims of scammers. I agree. Compassion is needed. However, it needs to be weighed against the property right of the owners. So if I own a house, let me, let me just give you a wacky example here. I own a house and I go on vacation for a week. And the first day I'm on vacation, somebody empties my house out. And on day two, they rent it out to somebody else. So I come home from vacation. All my stuff has gone. There's people in the house going, I belong here. I signed a lease. Well, who's more wronged by that? Me or the person who signed a lease? Because guess what? They got a roof over their head. I don't. You know, so I don't have a lot of sympathy for people because a lot of the stories I've heard were simply things like, well, I saw a guy advertising on Facebook Marketplace that he was leasing this house. And he had a key, so he must have owned it. And so, you know. Uh, first gear with no with no vowel, so it's FRST, could be frost gear. So Steve, thank you for the live stream. That folding chair does not look very comfortable to record videos in. Yeah, but I never sit for longer than 10, 12 minutes per video. So, you know. Um, Dan Shu, hello from Port Washington, Wisconsin. APOC operatives has just ordered a book. Thank you. I appreciate that. I'm, <laughs> I'm going to tell you right now, I got a mountain of books, but I also don't have enough envelopes yet. So I actually <laughs> going to be filling envelopes all day today and tomorrow. And then I got to wait for more envelopes to come because I need padded mailers for the books. By the way, somebody last week, asked me uh, about my thoughts on skateboarding, skateboarding. And I said, oh, that's funny. I go, I used to be a skateboarder. I know half the people who watch me talk go, really, really? There's me holding my skateboard yesterday. I went and found it. That's me yesterday holding my skateboard. And you might say, but Steve, how do we know that that's your skateboard? Maybe it's someone else's skateboard. No, no, no. I assure you that's my skateboard. <laughs> And yes, that bumper sticker right there is 40 years old. So that's my skateboarding uh, uh, credentials for you. Um, Lamour says, I Love Lucy was the first TV show to have a character give birth. More viewers watched the episode than watched President Eisenhower's inauguration. We forget how long television came, how far it came. Because there was a time when, for instance, in, in I Love Lucy, the husband and wife had separate beds. They weren't allowed to sit on the same bed together at first because of these morals clauses and stuff. And uh, eventually it came around. I can also tell you that the episode of the Flintstones where one of the cartoon characters gave birth to another cartoon character. It was the highest rated show of all time, which just shows you what passed for entertainment back then. <laughs> Taser face. Thank you for all that you do. We appreciate your various perspectives. We hope you received our email with background information on Tennessee police baptism. Yes, you did. Yes, I did. I got that after my video went up, so I obviously couldn't fit it in the video. But uh, JJ CEO 40 do you ship the books USPS? Yes, I do. They go US mail, and I get tracking on them. They are sent media mail, but tracking. And also, and this is important, to date, I've never had them lose a book in the mail. I've had them lose a whole box of books that I sent to myself, but I've never had them lose a single book. So I'm not worried about it. I've literally shipped thousands of books now in all the years I've been doing this. STP World says, did you know that Sesame Street was banned in Missouri for a month? I need to know what month that was and what year to figure out what kind of thing it might have gotten banned for, but you never know. The Prodigal Strangers says, Flintstone's also the first couple to appear in the same bed together. E.V. Hervey says, and it was Pebbles, was, was, was the, the child born, uh, or the, the, the cave person born. Um, so, I am that guy, says, my main mode of transportation was a skateboard. Bravery and confidence required. Uh, I'll have you know right now that I rode my skateboard everywhere. I, I had a 10-speed bike, but it depends on where I was going, and I'd ride my skateboard all over the place. Um, and then also for a while, I had a unicycle. And I was actually pretty good on a unicycle. I remember going to the store, which was 10 blocks away. And I'd go to the store and uh, come back with a bag of groceries on a unicycle. Could do that back then, no problem at all. Um, 
Jason Ralph points out that Paddle to the Sea is on the set. It's on the bookshelf back here. He goes, I assume it holds a place in your heart as it does for me. Absolutely. Uh, Paddle to the Sea is a, a book. I, I'm tapping my foot and I realize I'm making the camera bounce. Sorry. Um, Paddle to the Sea is a, is a, a, a book written, I think, in the 40s or 50s uh, about um, a, a kid who carves a canoe. And he writes on the bottom of it, please put me back in water. And he, and he puts it near the lake, above Lake Superior, Lake Nipissing. I could be wrong on that. Nipissing. And, and, it, and it, it, it goes in the river, goes in that lake, goes down to Lake Superior, and it goes through all of the Great Lakes and out the St. Lawrence Seaway. And the book is about the adventures that this little hand-carved canoe has. And um, it's, it's so enlightening because it, it does such a great job of explaining what the Great Lakes are in a language and style that, that kids can understand. It's a children's book. And yet when you look at it as an adult, you go, this is such a brilliantly written book. Such a brilliantly written book. And so um, it's, it's gotten a little bit of grief lately because it's written by a guy who was white and he has a Native American uh, in the book speaking in the broken prototypical language they used, you know, like Tonto and the Lone Ranger, like, oh, white man, go bang bang or whatever. And um, that's unfortunate because that doesn't, in my mind, take away from the fact that it's such a beautiful book and such a brilliant idea that that's how you could illustrate the relationship the lakes have to each other and to the land around them. And they did make a movie out of it. And the movie is not that, I don't think, that good. But um, uh, th there is a movie out there of it. STP World, you may or may not know this. Al Jean of the Simpsons is from Farmington. Yeah, and I believe, uh, isn't Pietala one of the producers also from Michigan? I could be wrong about that. But um, L.A. Detroit done anything new to the Cobra? No, I did take it out last weekend and got ice cream. Is it last weekend? Or no, no, it was a weeknight. Uh, one of the earlier nights this past week, it was nice out. Drove around looking for an ice cream place. Half the places are still closed. And I finally, I finally found one that was open and had a strawberry sundae. <laughs> and it had a very nice conversation in line with a guy who was was watching me walk up and he was can i ask you some questions about your car and i'm like dude fire away i, I I'll, I'll talk about the thing all day long so uh, two left thumbs says in the uk the vanilla paperback version of american murder houses which by the way is they, they it's only paperback uh, is 18 dollars on amazon i'd pay maybe 15 more for a signed copy if only to save pulping um I'm going to do an announcement. I'll probably mention it in a live stream where I'll take care of the people in England, Canada. This is going to be costly. Australia. I'll get the prices. And if you want to pay them, you can pay them. But I'm, I, the, I know that Canada will be more than the book. England will be substantially more, but it might be like 15 bucks. Uh, Australia, all bets are off. I, I don't know how to even get them down there. Um, <laughs> so Tiger Man 99515. Does the Cobra have cup holders? They'd only add weight. No. Cobra doesn't have bumpers. Um, be glad it's got seatbelts. Um, does not have airbags. Um, doesn't have traction control, stability control, uh, and no, no cup holders. I actually wish it had something to put stuff in. There is a, a flat spot in the middle over the transmission hump, and I, I might get something to put there, like put my cell phone in and things like that. But um, as of right now, it, it does not have any cup holders, so uh, I can't even drink a Diet Coke comfortably while I'm driving that vehicle. So Ember Mist 69, ever thought of learning to fly? Uh, yes and no. My brother's a pilot. I've known other pilots. There's a, a, a guy uh, who's an attorney who watches my show, and he and I correspond quite a bit. And he's a pilot and an instructor, and he took me flying last year out of Pontiac Airport. And we went up and we flew around and we we're having a great old time. He goes, so do you want to learn how to fly? I'm like, no, <laughs> I'm fine. <laughs> Species 1571, no love for Scotland. Well, do you want me to go through like all the possibilities? Like, okay, so here's what it is to ship it to the Isle of Man. So no, no, I'll, I'll, I'll try to get some prices there for you. 
Dan Boyd is the Cobra fiberglass or metal? It's fiberglass, fiberglass. Um, obviously, the original ones you could get were metal, but they also cost a lot of money. A lot of money. Jerry C., the Cobra is still street legal without bumpers. Hey, they played it. At, I don't know. <laughs> I assume it is. <laughs> Wouldn't somebody have told me by now if it wasn't? Fred Blowers has said several times the books are $15, not $12. Did I say $12? They're 15. I apologize if I said if I said 12. The books are 15 bucks. Uh, it has a cover price of 12. But um, my mailing costs more than three bucks. So does the Cobra have anti-lock brakes? I doubt it. I know that my Viper doesn't. <laughs> who needs who needs anti-lock brakes? Oh boy. JJ CEO 40 points out that Scotland should be proud because Willie the groundskeeper is awesome. <laughs> Blue JM says he better include Finland also. Uh, you know, I'm not sure. Um, I have viewers in Finland. I hear from them from, you know, from time to time. Uh, but I've never had any of them ask me for a book. So, Conzilla says 15 bucks is still cheaper than 18 from Barnes & Noble. The Richard says, uh, what inspired the Benjamin $100 saga? Um, that started a long time ago and it's actually gotten so old now. I hate to even go back to the beginning. Let's just say it's like, where's Waldo? It's become something on my set that is always there. And I apologize. I believe twice in my history, it hasn't been. And one time I put it in place and I sat down and it fell. I shot a video and I looked up and it was down on the ground. I'm like, oops, that won't be on camera. And, um, the other time, uh, I put it behind me and I thought it'd be visible but if it's not visible on camera and it's my fault, I will put that in the end screen. I'll actually say, I apologize, it's not on camera. And I'll let you know that. Uh, tail wheel driver, high steam, 61 years old, still have the Schwinn unicycle that I bought when I was in the eighth grade. Recently put my niece's six-year-old daughter on my shoulders and rode around the parking lot. Wow. Um, my brother... Still has a unicycle. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say something right now that very few of you will believe when you understand what I'm telling you. There is a ride across Iowa called the Rag Bri, where they let bicyclists get together and they ride from one end of Iowa to the other on bicycles. My brother did that on a unicycle. He, he, he thought, well, anybody can do it on a bike. <laughs> And I was talking to him about it. He goes, do you know what the sad part is? And I go, and he goes, I'm not the first person to do it. Apparently two other guys have done it already. Now there were no other unicyclists when he was doing it. But I mean, that's quite a distance. And you have to understand on a unicycle, you can't coast. You, you know, so on a bicycle, you can coast. No, unicycle, your legs are constantly moving. So it was a nightmare, but he did it. LG is nuanced, dead, or just on life support? Uh, no, it's dead. It's dead. Um, I can say something on camera, and it be as clear as possible, and people will accuse me of saying things I didn't say. They'll get mad at me. They'll say, well, you said this, and they'll say, well, you, what you meant was this. And um, no, no, I never said that. And um, I, I mentioned earlier in this video that I talked about how Arizona said that for bankruptcy purposes, an RV is not a home. And then I said, uh, if it ever did come down to whether or not something is your home, sometimes in court they'll ask you things like, where do you get your mail? Where would you register to vote? I had a guy send me the nastiest email. He goes, Steve, what's wrong with you? I'm not required to register to vote. I'm not even required to get mail. There's nothing in the common law that says you can force me to do either. You show me where it says you can force me to register to vote. I said, when did I ever say that someone could force you to register. I never said that. Like, what? Do you, you can't just make up stuff and then ask me why I'm so wrong to have said it if I didn't say it. So, uh, David, see, ever ridden a penny farthing bike? No, that's one that's got a big wheel in the front, a little wheel in the back. Uh, that's before they started coming safety bicycles, <laughs> which are safer. <laughs> I've seen them. I, I imagine that once you get up and you're moving, you're doing okay. But uh, until then, uh, Gilbert says there are electric unicycle races. And also, I saw a guy yesterday on Woodward Avenue in Detroit zooming along on an electric unicycle. 
And I realize it's got all kinds of balancing stuff in there, like a segue. But man, this guy, you know, he's wearing a helmet, wearing gloves and like elbow pads and stuff. But man, if he went down, he was going to get hurt. It it looked, it, it looked sketchy. David C., how do you get a driver's license without an address? Hey, are you telling me? No. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Tiger Man 99515 Kramer with his mail on Seinfeld. Goes and takes the Pottery Barn catalogs back to Pottery Barn. <laughs> if you get on their mailing list, there was a time where you would find yourself buried in catalogs. So. Oh, boy. Lowell Rigsium says, I failed at unicycling. It's one of those things that it looks harder then it really is if you're young and you don't mind falling down a couple times and you got decent balance. But I wouldn't suggest you pick it up in your 50s. But I was probably 12, 14 years old and two of my older brothers had learned to ride them. So I thought, oh, can't be that hard. Pup one, were you at Blue October last night? Yes, I was. Was anybody else uh, in, in here? Uh, sold out show at uh, the Fillmore in Detroit. And it was an amazing show. I love them. They're currently my favorite band that I've seen in the last few years. Um, but I've seen them four times. They always put on a great show. Uh, and, and they're one of the few bands that can do stuff I don't recognize. And I still go, I like this. I like this. I've seen bands play where half the music they play, I'm like, what is this? Is this like new or a huh? huh? But I did mention last week, and I'm going to mention it again briefly. And you're hearing me mention it a few more times between now and then, that I do actually currently have in my possession front row tickets to see ELO at the Little Caesars Arena this fall. Front row. I made it my goal in life. I missed them the last time they were here. The first album I ever bought as a young man was a New World Record. I also had Out of the Blue. I'm a huge fan of theirs. They came around about three, four years ago, and I missed it. And I was worried that they'd never come back because Jeff Lynn and the rest of the guys were getting a little older. And they announced one more, one more show. And I, I said to myself, I'm going to get the best tickets humanly possible. And now I could be up on stage sitting up there, I guess, playing an instrument, but uh, I'll take the front row. So <laughs> I'll tell you about that when it comes up. Bernadine Sackinger says, why do the police have ordinances that the law? I'm not sure what the question is, but I suspect you might be asking. Uh, about whether or not ordinances and statutes are laws. And I hear people say that a lot. And if you go and look at a dictionary, especially like a Black's Law Dictionary, some people like using those, and look up the word ordinance, it'll say, well, this is often another word for a law or a statute. And you look up statute, and it'll go, this is often another word for a law or an ordinance. And uh, the real question is, what are enforceable and what are not? And so ordinances are often referred to as the local, like local ordinances. Uh, but statutes and laws, it just depends. Michigan calls the laws the Michigan compiled laws. Uh, but you'll also hear people refer to them as statutes. You know, we have a lemon law statute. And a statute and a law in that setting are, are the words are the same. I know people don't believe that, but, but it's true. So um, I hope that answers your question, but I don't know. Um, now I just saw the phrase blue October go by and, uh, Gilbert's has ever seen a show at the Royal Music Theater. Of course, that's where I saw frontline assembly and Gary Newman and a <laughs> ministry. That was the Royal Oak. I also saw Gary Newman there back in 1982. Um, I've seen so many shows at the Royal Music Theater. Uh, it's a, it's a fabulous venue. I prefer to see shows where you're seated so you can sit down. But I've been to a bunch of shows that are standing room only there. But I saw Puddles the Clown at the Royal Oak Music Theater, one of the best shows I've ever seen. If you don't know who I'm talking about, you're missing out. If you do, you got to understand what the guy does. He's a fabulous singer, and some of the stuff he does is so inventive and so creative. And to watch him do an entire show that's put together that well is mind-blowing. And I walked out of there, and he actually said, he didn't say it, but he put it up on the screen. He goes, if you want to. Meet and greet in the lobby after the show. I stood in line for like an hour and a half to get my picture taken with him. And uh, I, I can't explain it. You, you, you know, if you see the guy live, the guy's six foot eight. 
He's towering over me when I get my picture taken with him. And he's one of the best vocalists I've ever heard. And he does things where he'll take like the lyrics to Pinball Wizard and sing it to the Folsom City, uh, the Folsom Prison Blues. <laughs> it works. And, and you're like, whoa, how does that work? And it does. But then he'll take some other song and, and he'll slow it down and it'll and 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 make like a real sad version of it. And, and it's just, I, it, it, it's, he speaks to me in a way that I can't describe. So the Richards is hearing about your concert taste was mind blowing, perhaps healing to others to know someone as renowned as yourself likes similar music. You know, it's, it's one of those things. Musical tastes are so hard to describe or define. I've met people who tell me they like some artists. I'm like, really? Never did it for me. But when you meet somebody you click with and, and, and you mention like two or three bands, you know, like I'll mention to somebody, go, you know, you know, what one of the greatest albums of all time is. And they go, what's that? I go, the first album by AHA. Okay. Take on me. And of course, Hunting High and Low, which is the title track. That album is a masterpiece. It only had one hit in America. Two of you count um, Hunting High and Low, which did chart, or maybe in the Sun Always Shines on TV may have charted. Um, but they're huge everywhere else, but they're not big in America. But that album is amazing. And I've met other people who are like, um, you like Aha? I'm like, yeah, I love Aha. Like, yes! <laughs> you have so much to talk about. <laughs> so. STP World says, I was really disappointed in uh, Weird Al's last concert. The VIP was just sign the photo, take a pic, and get out. I've heard mixed things about different people doing those kind of meet and greets. I've been to one before where they said, you know, you can meet the artist after the show. And I got in the line. They go, by the way, no pictures. I'm like, you think I'm going to stand in line to shake the guy's hand? I would love to be able to go like this and take a quick picture, you know. But I understand if the guy doesn't want to do that, that's fine. But but don't expect me to stand in line for an hour and a half to do that. So, JJ CEO 40 Susanna, the only good thing about the movie was the ELO written soundtrack. <laughs> oh. NF Cap says, did you ever get a chance to look up Phil Kege? No, I did not. I mean, I looked him up. Didn't get a chance to, to check out his music. Every now and then people will actually say to me, you know, check this guy, check that guy. And I try, but sometimes I don't have the time. Uh, the Richards' take on me, the video, is one of the greatest artistic achievements ever in music videos. Absolutely. Go watch that video today and, and then realize how groundbreaking it was for the time. And it's, I've had people say, but Steve, it's got nothing to do with the song. It doesn't need to. You don't need... Do you really need the video to play out the song? No. You just want something that, 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 that fits, and it worked so well. So, uh, Lou58 Lou says, have you ever watched the YouTuber Professor of Rock? Yes, I have. He does a lot of great coverage of different bands and artists. Yes, and I don't even know what his backstory is. I just know that I've, I've watched him before, and it's a question of whether or not I can uh, relate to the music he's talking about. It's like Rick Beato. I love Rick Beato. And Rick Beato has a channel, like three or four million subscribers. And he's a musician and a recording engineer, and he owns his own studio. And he'll pick some song, and he'll go, um, you know, uh, he'll pick like, you know, Losing losing My Religion by R.E.M. You know, uh, R.E.M. And he'll go, uh, I almost said R.E.M. Speedwagon. R.E.M. And he'll go, this, you know, why this song is great. And he'll take the song and dissect it. And he'll point things out to you that unless you're a sound engineer musician like him, you'd never catch. And by the time he's done, you're like, oh, my God. But but I like that better when he's doing songs I like. Once in a while, he'll pull out a song. And I'm like, eh, you know, so I won't watch that. <sighs> Willie Nelson still performing at 90. Janice Ellery. And I believe he's got a son who also performs. Although, quite frankly, it might be his grandson. But there's another Nelson who sings and sounds just like Willie, just like Willie. Um, and I forgot what song. I think it's Angel Flying Too Close to the Ground. And I love Willie Nelson. Absolutely love Willie Nelson. Willie Nelson is, is one of those guys um, that that it, he's, he's so unique. He's like a national treasure. I really think he is. And um, But the fact that his, his I think it's his son, uh, sounds just like him. <laughs> so... Bob A. Bong, Steve, see me, please. I saw the Grateful Dead play 10 different shows. Checking in from Sonny Benton Harbor. Is Sonny here as well? 
Victor Jason says your ceiling is leaning to the right or your left. Inflate the 35 PSI. That'll fix it. Um, we could also probably get some kind of bottle jack and just jack it. I guess we're going this way, right? <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, Thomas Garrity, net neutrality. I don't follow that that much, so I apologize. Cohort 61, Beato. You know, Rick Beato is, is, is he's one of those guys. I've heard him talking about um, when he started doing videos and what inspired him to do videos. And it's kind of funny because you watch him right now and you go, this is a guy who belongs on YouTube. That's, I mean, this is a guy. And you realize that he didn't even realize that he belonged on YouTube until he was there, you know? And that's the thing. I've, I've, I've met a lot of people who are on YouTube and are successful who will look back and I go, you know, I, I didn't know it would work like this. So, Rob, did you go and see the total solar eclipse? No, I was doing yard work. <laughs> Douglas, his son, Lucas. Yeah, Lucas... Nelson, Willie's kid. Uh, Zachary Schmuck, have you ever seen Springsteen? Not live. No, I have not. Um, a brother of mine saw him play someplace huge in Hollywood, out in California, some, some big stadium show, and said it was an amazing show. Uh, Bruce Springsteen is known as being a very, very energetic performer who puts a lot of effort into what he's doing. Um, and so people who go to see his shows often come back and say, you know, it was an amazing show. I can tell you that one of the great things I like about YouTube is if there's a band you like and you want to see what they look like live, you can find live performances, both professionally shot ones, but also stuff shot by people in the audience. And so there was a song that they played last night, uh, Blue October did, that I didn't recognize. And so I made a mental note to look it up later, and I looked it up. And then I went and looked up the studio version, and I looked up a live version and saw a version not shot last night but two nights ago by somebody in the front row and it, it looks just like the show I was at. And so somebody did that with their phone. What drives me crazy is the number of people who are filming vertically. They're filming a, a concert in, in portrait mode. And you're like, really? Don't you realize that you can do this and get a better? You don't know that? Really? How, how long have these things been out? <laughs> James Chmelik, what is your opinion on Lewis Rossman and right to repair? Um, I've been on his show talking about it. So Johnny Knoxville says it was probably at the Hollywood Bowl and it very well could have been. Um, so Jan Witz, 499,000 subscribers. Awesome. And Zachary says I got the last name pronunciation correct. Schmuck. I, I was just guessing on that, but I thought that was a safe bet. Let's see now. We're at 499,485. So I still need more than 500 subs. I'll probably get there Tuesday. Um, Jerry C. I've seen Robin Trower a couple times, front row in a smaller venue. Totally awesome. One of my faves. Bridge of Size. Is that Robin Trower? My brain is filled with all kinds of useless information from back when I was in the radio. Species 1571 TikTok generation. You know, that might be right that people are thinking about. You know, the audience at, at Blue October is a little bit older than the typical TikTok audience. Have you ever been to Tony's Restaurant in Birch Run? Of course. Famous for their breakfasts. Birch Run, of course, is also an outlet mall. If you're driving up north or coming back and you want to kill an hour or two, stop off there. Dan Boyd, I've seen The Clash and I've seen King Crimson. Okay, sir, you just like like you just <laughs> you just flopped an ace pair. Okay. The Clash, obviously, number one, a couple members are gone now, so they can't reunite. Number two, they haven't toured in a long time. Uh, and to see them live would have been stellar. The Clash it would have been amazing. King Crimson, of course. Um, Tony Levin is the bass player, uh, and they've gotten together a few of those guys to tour playing King Crimson music. I, I think it's called, they call themselves Beat, and they were actually on Rick Beato last week talking about it. And Tony Levin, and, and I know I'm going to offend some bass players here, but Tony Levin is the first bass player that I ever saw in real life where I actually thought to myself, he is as much fun to watch as anybody else on stage. And if you don't know, he's the guy who tours with Peter Gabriel. But he's played on literally hundreds and hundreds of albums that you've heard. He's, he's, he's one of the most well-renowned studio bass players in the world. And look up Tony Levin, find his website, and look at his credits. It'll blow your mind. But you watch him. Go find, there was, a, um, uh, for My Secret World, 
a Peter Gabriel concert video professionally shot. And it's shot of that particular tour. And I saw them on that tour, by the way. It's a fabulous tour. And Tony Levin plays both an upright, or, I'm sorry, regular, like a, like a Fender bass. But he also plays a Chapman stick. And he interchanges those things because they, Peter Gabriel is also a guitar player. So, so I've seen him play like on Salisbury Hill, a bass, or I've seen him play a Chapman stick. It just depends on what he feels like playing that day, I guess. And he is so good. And, and if you watch and focus on him, you realize that he's doing stuff that a lot of bass players don't bother doing because they don't think, hey, nobody's watching me. Nobody can actually pick out what I'm doing the same way you can pick out a guitar solo or Peter Gabriel, who's up front, hamming it up for the, for the spotlight. And I've been to those shows and I find myself doing this because I'm watching Tony Levin and I'm watching Peter Gabriel, the, Tony Levin. And it's, he's an entertaining bassist to watch and he's extremely good. So mine, Ben says, Hey, Steve, your room is cleaner than mine. <laughs> Well, I'm sure you know this is a studio. It's more of a junk pile. But <laughs> Mr. Phil says the first concert I went to is Frank Zappa. Um, Frank Zappa is one of those guys. Uh, I know he's passed, but he was such an interesting guy um, and a brilliant musician. Uh, many Americans only know him from, of course, uh, Valley Girl <laughs> off of Chic Your Booty. And uh, he was he was a genius musically and otherwise and he's an odd guy and he'd write songs where if you're listening to him without hearing the lyrics you go that's a great song then you listen to the words and you're like well that's a weird song that's strange <laughs> <laughs> apparently it, it, what he was doing paid well enough for him to not care how how marketable it was that he was doing it and i remember working at my first uh my very first time in a radio station i was not on the air i was an intern at WABX, which is one of the original free-form radio stations in America, 99.5 in Detroit. And they had been free-form earlier. They finally went over into uh, a little bit more of a format. And all the DJs would talk about uh, Frank Zappa. We wish we could play Frank Zappa. And occasionally they might play like, you know, Dental Floss Tycoon or something, but... <laughs> Johnny Knoxville, surprised you didn't go with hardwood floors up there. Uh, no, I'm worried about the sound. So you got you to carpet the floors. Um, even in my last studio, the floor was not carpeted when I got there. And I put carpet down because otherwise you get reflections off the floor as well as the ceilings and the walls. And I've already got problems with reflections up here. Um, the Richard, have you heard of Concrete Blonde? Of course I have. Singer Jeanette has the most powerful vocals ever. You may know the song Joey. Of course. And, of course, they also did a cover version, I believe, of Tomorrow Wendy. Or am I thinking of a different song? I know that they did um, a cover of Everybody Knows, the um, Leonard Cohen song. Um, and it's kind of funny because I heard their version first. And that's a cool song. The lyrics are really cool. And then I heard Leonard Cohen's version. I'm like, oh, that's even cooler. <laughs> oh, boy. But, of course, um, Concrete Blonde got a lot of airplay, especially in Los Angeles. So... Bob Bong says, hey, Steve, pull your camera back a few feet and put more on the wall. Uh, yeah, but the further I get and the more junk that gets behind me, I start diminishing. So um, Rational Bushcraft saw Queen with an awesome show at Wings Stadium. Um, yeah, now are you talking about Queen with Freddie or Adam Lambert? Believe it or not, I like Adam Lambert. Uh, he's, not, he's not Freddie Mercury, but nobody would be. And so if you had to replace... Queens, Freddie Mercury with somebody. Adam Lambert's not a bad bet. And I've seen him performing live personally, but on, on TV and at, at shows. And um, he he's the next best thing. And so I, I really, really like him and them. Johnny Knoxville says, uh, Valley Girl, I went to the all-historic Valley Girl and Fast Times at Ridgemont High High School locations in LA. You know, I was in LA for two years and did not bother going around doing all the touristy stuff and of course, once I'm home, I'm like, maybe I should have done that. Rocky the X Puck, X Pup from Gilbert. Yeah, Rocky the X Pup was the uh, was the mascot, and before that, it was the Air Aces. So there was a uh, like fighter craft coming down, and it said WABX, the Air Aces, and then Rocky the X Pup. And I used to have it's not in the set anymore, 
but I had a little patch that could be put on a, a piece of clothing or on a hat, and it was Rocky the X Pup. Didn't say that, but it was it was a dog, uh, and then it had the call letters and the, and the frequency on it. I've still got one of those. So, uh, Ember Mist, have you had to buy more racks for your T-shirts? Uh, no, but I do pull things out. I do pull things out of the rotation and move them through. So. Mind Ben says, I just noticed that this is your regular studio from the side. Um, believe it or not, I used to do live streams from my regular studio. But, and this is going to sound like a really dumb excuse, but it's true. I can't get my cable, <laughs> my internet, to work over there the way I can right here. And it's one of these things where I'm, I'm so sick of dealing with this. I just thought, you know, I'll do them here. I don't care. And by the way, I'll give you a different view of the side of the set. So. Buddy Toby TV says that groundhogs are mentioned on Jeopardy, and the question was something to the effect of they're also known as this kind of pigs. I'm guessing what is a whistle pig? <laughs> Zachary Schmuck, what do you think about Journey without Steve Perry? I saw them with an opener by Night Ranger. Um, I was never a big Journey fan, uh, so I don't really know how I feel about that one way or the other. Um. Gilbert says, I have a WABX t-shirt, but it's not your size. I probably have a couple WABX t-shirts also. Um, there's, a, there's a chair kind of block in the way, but I think I can do this to some extent. Hang on. Hang on. This is very meta. This is very, very, you know, layers of an onion kind of thing. Um, come on. So there's what the two racks of t-shirts look like. How can I do this? Right, right there, maybe kind of. There's two racks of t shirts over there. I think that's 150 to 170 shirts. Um, I tend to wear two a day, so you know, two videos, and so they work their way across. And as I get new ones, I pull old ones out. I got three t shirts just the other day, so they'll do that. Um, J Duds 100, happy to see you back in the live stream. Thank you, appreciate that. Um, Dan Boyd, I remember Night Ranger. <laughs> the Richard, Adam Lambert, is really good. Front man for Queen. My mom got me into his songs. Is happy with his success. When he was on American Idol, uh, he did a couple songs. He did a version of Tracks of My Tears where he slowed it down. And Smokey Robinson was sitting in the front row watching him sing it. And it was startlingly good. Look it up. You can find it on, on YouTube. Likewise, he also took the song of I Can't Have You, the Yvonne Elliman song, and slowed it down into a ballad. And again, it was unbelievably good. And I like somebody who can take a song that you're familiar with and mix it up and make it interesting and good in another way. And a lot of the people on American Idol come out and sing a song, and you're like, okay, that sounded just like the record. We don't need someone else to sing their song for them. We want you to sing a song in your style. Do something with it. And I don't know if the producers of the show did that for him or the arrangers or if he did it on his own. All I know is he came out on disco night and the music starts real slow. And I'm like, this ain't disco. And I realize, oh my gosh, it's Yvonne Elliman's If I Can't Have You, which counts as disco because <laughs> Saturday Night Fever. So David Persons, no one could touch Neil Diamond live. He was incredible, especially when he's younger. I never saw Neil Diamond live. Uh, his catalog is amazing, likewise. Unfortunately, he's gotten a bit of a rap because Sweet Caroline has been overplayed to the point where it's almost become like a joke. Um, but the reason it's overplayed is because people love to sing along with it, and it's catchy. So, The Prodigal Stranger is talking about the W and the K for radio call signs. He says the guideline more than a rule, and that is true. Ws tend to be east of the Mississippi. Ks tend to be west. But there are some outliers. So there's, uh, I think somebody mentioned KDKA uh, in Pittsburgh. DePaul mentioned that. Um, and I, I think what happened was, I think now, I think now if you signed on the brand new radio station, FCC would make you take a W for East of the Mississippi and take K for the West. But I think in the old days, stations could swap call letters among a network, for instance. I don't know exactly how it happened. And likewise, I know that most, most Canadian radio stations begin with the letter C. 
but not all. And so I learned that also. So a lot of these things aren't carved in stone, although quite frankly, um, MHOA points out that in the Twin Cities, CCO is west of the river, KSTP is east. But of course, that's because the river's right, right there. <sighs> George Ruggiero says, you've got to explain the sign lawyer dog to people. Yeah, it's one of the most embarrassing things I've had to encounter as an attorney, but I read the story about a guy down south who was arrested. And he's read his rights. They said, so you have the right to an attorney. Do you want one? He goes, yeah, I want a lawyer, dog. And they just started questioning him. So he talked to him. When he went to court, they said, well, he asked for a lawyer, but he didn't get one. They said, no, no. He asked for a lawyer, dog. There's no such thing. Everyone knows he said, I'd like a lawyer, comma, dog. You just can't see punctuation. And that made it to a state Supreme Court who said, nope, he asked for a lawyer, dog. <laughs> Now, I don't mind a prosecutor taking a stupid argument, but for the judge to buy it, the appellate court judges to buy it, and the Supreme Court judges to buy it is an embarrassment on the judiciary of the entire state. It really is, because we all know what the guy meant, and he used the word lawyer. If he said, no, I want to talk to one of them dogs, well, th no, but a lawyer dog, yes. Mindbend and several others are calling out CKLW, which, of course, is the Windsor Big Eight. And as licensed in Canada, gigantic signal. You could hear it all over North America at night. They were also a leader in top 40 radio. They broke a lot of songs that other stations weren't playing yet. They're number one in Detroit, Toledo, Flint, I think Lansing at one point in time. The number one station in those cities, and it was in Canada. So uh, very, very well known to people my age and a little bit older. Um Species 1571 says we don't have that in the UK. Stations just have names. I just read a book on the history of radio. It's written by an English guy, and it emphasizes a lot of stuff happening with radio in England. And I did not know as much about that as I should have. And it was fascinating watching these early, early stations signing on and what they would put on for programming. Because, you know, there's a time when you put the signal up, the antenna up, you put the signal out, there's like three people listening. So how much money do you put into, you know, the cost of your program? <laughs> also in Australia. In Australia, it's hilarious. Um, I, I did not know, for instance, how late FM adoption happened in Australia. So in America, FM radios were coming in in the 70s. And by the end of the 70s, they were very, very common. And AM was already starting to go away in terms of its influence on music radio. My understanding is that Australia caught in a little bit later. So, um, CKLW is the only station we could get in Hooterville, Thumb of Michigan. Now, there was, isn't really a place called Hooterville, is there? So, no, Hooterville, of course, is from Green Acres. And I know the Thumb pretty well, but I wouldn't be surprised if there's a town up there called Hooterville. Um, Burning Sensations has checked in and mentions 91X, which, of course, is down there by the Mexican border. Uh, and I, and I believe, uh, don't Americans run the station, but the transmitters in Mexico or something. I could be wrong on that. I know it's a very, very powerful signal. Uh, the real question of course is burning sensations is checked in who said that. And every single week I mention, I mentioned that burning sensations, a band, they have a song called belly of the whale. <laughs> Can somebody right now as a favor to me say, Steve, I just went and checked it out. It's a cool song. <laughs> Until that happens, I'm going to keep mentioning this, and you're going to get sick of me saying it. So David Person says we get all the border blasters here in Texas from Mexico. And that's the thing. It's they call them there. Because if you got a signal in Mexico, it doesn't stop at the border. It blasts in every which direction. And so you get a, a monstrous signal, and you put the antenna right near the border. And then, of course, you advertise to Americans. So Andy... NY29 says, I saw Led Zeppelin at Nebworth on August 4th, 79. So glad I did because the drummer died the following year and the band broke up. Yeah, Zeppelin also played the Pontiac Silverdome uh, north of Detroit. My brother went and saw the show. And at that time, it was the largest audience for a single band concert. Uh, it was insane. The Richards of Jack Black was in a film called Pirate Radio, I believe set in Australia. Um, I know there's also that movie about pirate radio that was set in England where they're in the boats out in the channel. But um, 
Oh, there is no Hooterville in the thumb. <laughs> I left, so now it's all Hooterville. <laughs> oh, boy. Net Friends is Steve. I just went and checked, and that's a cool song. <laughs> Thank you for humoring me. Thank you. Stephanie Howe was napping. I hope we weren't too loud for you. Oh, boy. Brian Sherwood says in the East, the big Canadian stations were CHOM, Montreal, and CHEE, Ottawa. Um, Mindbeds also says it's a cool song. Thank you. Cohort says that the stations are 100,000 watts in Mexico. Wouldn't surprise me. Oh, boy. Somehow I, I, I just touched the knob and also. Yeah, Radio Caroline was the pirate ship transmitter off of England and actually went through several iterations and also several ships. I just learned about that in the book I just read. Um, ha, ha, ha. Stephanie Howe had a long week. <laughs> uh, Robert Brooker says, that song memory triggered Mexican radio by the Wall of Voodoo. That's another song that got a lot of airplay uh, back in the day on KROQ Los Angeles. Uh, the Richard says, irony, I lived in the UK, and you're correct. The movie is set in England. Okay. Lou 58 Lou says, Warren, Michigan is also known as Hooterville. <laughs> Warren's a big town. People don't realize that Warren, actually, by population, is one of the largest towns in Michigan. Just not as well known as Detroit or Grand Rapids. Steven Anderson says, I have been a longtime subscriber, and I just realized that your mic logo is the Finnish flag. You know what's funny is so many people don't notice it. I hate to even point it out. But here is the logo to my show, right? And that, of course, is a microphone. And, of course, this is stylized to look like an RE20, but this cross here also forms a Finnish flag. So my friend Jane Chaika, who did that for me, came up with it. And she said, well, what do you want your logo to look like? And I said, I don't know. Knock yourself out. She goes, well, give me some ideas. I go, I don't know, the microphone, the Finnish flag, whatever. And boom, like came back with that. So DePaul31 says, Wolfman Jack broadcast from Mexico. He did. And then he also broadcast from a whole bunch of other places. He worked in New York for a while. He even had a syndicated show in the early 80s. And of course, he's well known for being the voiceover and the radio guy in American Graffiti. Uh, fascinating guy. Uh, and he's one of those guys who, as a disc jockey, became so well known that he winds up on like, you know, like Hollywood squares and stuff. So Scott Summer says, bet it's bigger than Omer. Omer, Michigan. Isn't that the site of the annual sucker festival? I kid you not. There are these fish, they call them suckers and they run, I'm guessing in the spring and uh, they have a big old sucker festival. And it's just, what <laughs> to me, it was always kind of amusing. <laughs> Josh Homan says, Warren, Michigan is where Dodge trucks are made. There's a whole bunch of stuff automotive-related out near Warren, including General Dynamics, I believe, is, is out that way. Although they may have changed their name. 55 Sedal, how much would you charge for a sticker? You know, sad part is, those are given to me. And um, I've only got so many left, you know, left over. Stephanie House says, The Buggles... Video killed the radio star, of course, the first song played on MTV. Trivia, the first day was 8-1-81, August 1st, 81. Second song was Pat Benatar. And the first words spoken on MTV were, ladies and gentlemen, rock and roll. And the Buggles' first album was really good. The whole album was good. The Age of Plastic. JJ CEO 40 says, Bay City, Michigan, Bay City Rollers. The rumor is that the band wanted a name that sounded American. And somebody came up with the idea about Bay City. It's near the water. Maybe they surf, rollers. Next thing, Bay City rollers. I, I have no idea how much truth there is to that or how much logic there is behind it, even if true. <laughs> I like the Bay City rollers. <laughs> Tim Nossum, how is it going? It's going well, my friend. Although, quite frankly, it's getting kind of late. We've been doing this for close to two hours. I am now losing my voice. I'm trying hard not to have a hacking fit on Mike, so we'll, we'll see how much longer I can hang in there. Buddy Toby TV, does MTV still exist? Hypothetically, it's a channel. 
but they haven't played music videos in a long time. Dan Boyd's at MTV kind of ruined music. Yes and no, because there's some music that didn't trans well, translate well in the video. On the other hand, they played music nobody else was playing. You know, who else would have played Flock of Seagulls if not for MTV? <laughs> and I love the Flock of Seagulls, too. <sighs> oh, boy. Dire Straits, Money for Nothing. Yeah, that's another big MTV song. Oh, boy. Yeah, Kazoo Latricia says, have a drink of water. It's easier said than done. I, I got nothing up here. I, I, I always think I should bring something. And I thought, well, if I bring it, I dump it on my keyboard, they'll be bummed out. So, you know. David Persons, are you going to make these YouTube live streams a regular event? I'm going to try to. If I've got time, I'll do it. Zachary Schmook says, I'd slap a Lato's Law sticker and a Legal Eagle sticker on my car and probably won't get pulled over. Um, you never know. I, I actually did. <laughs> I had a guy who mowed my lawn, and he saw one of these on my car. He's going to have one of those. Like, what are you going to put? He's on my lawnmower. <laughs> so, <laughs> he's got one on his lawnmower. Oh, boy. Jacob C., good morning from Brisbane, Australia. Glad I could catch you. I'm glad you did. I mentioned before I used to do a call-in about once a month with a guy named Chris Goodsell in Australia for the radio there. He passed away a couple months ago. It's kind of sad because about once a month I'd talk to this guy via Zoom about cars and stuff. And it was always fun comparing notes, you know. And I'm sure I, I was just as entertained by his accent as he was entertained by mine, but he passed away, so... Buddy Toby TV kids came of age in the total request live days. They'd at least play music videos at night. I don't have cable anymore. Yeah, and I've seen some bands that appeared on TRL that I was kind of surprised by. Um, but, you know, they, they did get the music out. Sledgehammer, Fight Me, Norm Anderson. You know, I love Peter Gabriel, but that's not my favorite song. Um, I, I, I think he phoned it in on a couple of those albums. JJ CEO 40, Lawnmower or Lawn Tractor? In his case, it's a zero-turn mower. It's not considered a tractor, I don't think. Marcus King, have you ever had a case regarding vehicle importation to the U.S.? No, I never dealt with that. Retired Butcher Boy, still riding the Peloton. Yes, I wrote it uh, this morning. Emmanuel Guerra, I need to pay for my Steve Leto book. Yes. <laughs> and what I'll tell you right now, I'm going to have to end. I, I can't do this much longer. Is that... I did make an offer yesterday via video. If you want one of these books, 15 bucks from me. I've got a stack of them downstairs. If you want one, email me directly at steve at latoslaw.com. I'll put it in the box right now, steve at latoslaw.com. And for 15 bucks, you get the book. I sign it, but you have to be in the U.S. right now. I cannot send these things out of the country yet because the cost is too prohibitive. But the book normally was priced 12 bucks. But 15 from me, I sign it, send it to you, and uh, that takes care of postage and handling and all that. I've had several people go, Steve, how much for postage? I'm like, no, no, it's built into the price, 15 bucks. So if you go ahead and email me at that address, uh, I will invoice you via Square. But I do need your first and last name. So in the email, put book in the subject line, just book. I'll see it. I'll invoice you. Pay the invoice. And next week, starting tomorrow. I'm sitting down and stuffing envelopes. <laughs> so that's going to wrap it up for us right now. I will see you hopefully next weekend, probably on Sunday. Until then, behave yourself. Bye-bye.